after a few weeks, you'll see they take off. They're really, really aggressive. Um, and one thing I'd like to recommend for you guys is to prime your seed. And priming, all that is, is just getting ready. If you guys are going to run a, a marathon, I've never run a marathon, so I'm probably just lying here. But if you guys are going to run a marathon, you want to get ready. And the way you get ready the day before, and I don't know why, I'm just lying. I'm just making this stuff. But I'm assuming that you would eat high carbohydrate foods and you would make sure that you're well hydrated. So your seed are going on a marathon. And the way to prime them is to soak them in warm water overnight. It's just like cooking frijoles, it's just like cooking beans. If you just pull dry beans out and you try to boil them, they'll work, but it's gonna take a few hours. If you soak them overnight, you soften the seed coat, right? And you can have frijoles ready in 45 minutes, you're good. You'll be having refried beans in an hour. So I want you guys to prime your seed because we have very little rain and it's expensive to water. And so you're basically watering your seed. You're giving your seed a head start by soaking it overnight in warm water. Um, a lot of folks like to use seed bombs in weedy vacant lots. That's a cool idea. That's fun. But I wanna encourage you guys not to do that to start off with, because that could be depressing because what's in weedy vacant lots is a lot more aggressive plants than what we're gonna plant. And once the weeds take over, they're really hard to destroy. So unless you go to that weedy vacant lot and weed, your seed bombs have almost no chance, right? As restoration, restoration is almost the first rule of trying to restore weedy native areas is to get rid of the weeds. And a lot of times it takes two or three years just to start that process which is why it's a lot easier to do it in your garden, right? Um, and I know a lot of folks will see like bare patches of soil where nothing grows. There's usually a reason why nothing grows in a bare patch of soil because it's really bad conditions. People um, walk there, their dogs pee there. There's all sorts of reasons why patches are bare. And I want to encourage you guys not to waste your seed, at least to begin with, on bare patches because your seed probably won't grow there. Um, if invasive, uh, brome and invasive mustard won't grow there. Your seed's probably not going to grow there. So when you do have your seed and it, you do have the flowers, like I said before, I would love for you guys to encourage them to go to seed, which means you will have a lot of old, dry, dead looking plants in your garden. That's okay. Let them be there for a year so you can establish that seed bank. Um, or alternatively, once the seed is dry, you can pull the plants out and then shake the seed loose and then get rid of the, the dry stuff so it doesn't look so, so weedy. And after this, I would love for you guys to check out the Larner Seeds website. Judith Larner Lowry is a phenomenal native plant uh, seed woman and horticulturist, and she does great work with native wildflower seeds. And she's, she has amazing free resources on her website that I would highly recommend you guys check out. And so we got a few plants that we're gonna go over today. There's some cool stuff. These are just a few of the seed that we're gonna sow. After I show you guys about four or five cool pictures, we're gonna show you some videos on how to make your seed bombs. So this is yarrow. This is, um, you can see the distribution of yarrow and why it's so easy to grow. It can grow up in the sequoias. It can grow in the in Fresno foothills. It can grow in um, Santa Cruz. It can grow in Baja. So a plant like this, I love to use, especially for beginners because it's, and I'm not, not saying you guys are beginners, but in general, we love to recommend this plant for beginners because it's just so flexible. It's so easy to grow. It has a fern-like leaf that a lot of folks use for medicine. And then it has this beautiful flat white flowers that butterflies love to sit on. So there's a full picture of yarrow. It grows underground, so it spreads by rhizome. And it's an interesting plant because you could actually find this plant native to uh, Europe and different parts of Asia but it is native to California as well. The California native ones are white flowers. There's one pink flower. You guys might find orange and red flowers in Home Depot or Lowe's. Those are not native. They're great plants, but those aren't the native ones. Um, and I think the thing to know about this is that it's probably one of our best pollinator plants. It's an excellent pollinator plant for local bugs. Um, so love this plant. It's a super rock star plant, easy to grow. And that's, that's in your guys' seed mix. The other one that you will be sowing today is narrow leaf milkweed. And as you guys may or may not know, milkweed is the only food that monarch caterpillars will eat. And so the monarch mamas are super smart and they will lay their eggs on milkweed. 
Um, and this is the local narrow leaf milkweed that occurs. You can see the distribution is very wide. And the monarchs basically follow this track from Baja all the way up past, you know, uh, past Sacramento into Oregon um, during the summer. And then they come back down to, to go to sleep along the coast. But this is the native milkweed and this is the perfect time to plant it. It's germinating. Um, well, I mean, it germinated a few months ago, but it's starting to send out leaves and stems and it's a beautiful, necessary plant. You can see a caterpillar right there about to just have dinner. Um, it is a plant that's super interesting because it disappears completely during the winter, but the same plant will come back. So that exact same plant will rise from the ground again, starting about March, April, and then be in full flower about June and July. So it's a really cool plant. Full sun, light shade. We have some sticky monkey flower in the seed mix. You probably won't see the seed of sticky monkey flower because it's so tiny, it's, it's dust. You could have a one tablespoon could probably have about 200,000 seed. They're just so, so tiny. Um, so good luck finding them, but they're in there. And the distribution of monkey flowers is pretty wide, um, but it is in well-drained areas. So if you guys find that this germinates for you, but you find that it's not having success or that it's looking bad, it's probably because it's getting too much water. Um, but that would be in a few months after it started to establish. Um, but it is one of our showiest perennials. People love using it. Um, it's best I found in light shade if you're like in Pasadena or hotter areas, which fortunately the narrow leaf milkweed and the yarrow will like too. They can live in full sun, but they just don't look amazing in full sun. They get a little beat up. And then we have two more perennials. And remember perennials are the plants that will be around for years, right? They'll be around for two years, for five years, for 10 years. There's, this is a blue-eyed grass on the left and then California poppy or Schulzia californica on the right. That's our state wildflower. And so I just wanna encourage you guys one more time to join us. Um, if you would like, right at this website, you just Google Samuel Fund Eventbrite and you'll find all of these classes and the Monarch and Milkweed Conference that we have going on June 5th is super, super important, I think, and free. So I'd love for you guys to check that out. Um, and I think with that, I'll leave this, um, this page up and I can share this uh, short PDF or this short PowerPoint as a PDF with you, Summer, if you'd like to share with other folks. Um, there's my email right there if you guys are interested. Here's a few local nurseries where you can find plants. And some of these nurseries have seed for sale too. These are some of my favorite books and websites for native plants. And if you have any questions, if you'd like to volunteer with us or you're like, oh, what was that milkweed you were talking about? Feel free to email me here at, uh, at my website or at my, um, at my email. And uh, let's see if we have any other questions somewhere. If not, I will pop up these videos. We do have a couple questions. Let's see, let's start from the bottom. Um, Becca's asking, are you saying it would be better not to plant our seed bombs right now and wait till later in the year? Yeah, that's a very good question. I think, so, so do you guys want me to be honest? Or do you want me to be honest? I'm just kidding. So, so here's the thing about, about native seed is that as long as you provide them water, they're gonna grow. They'll germinate. Right now is about the latest that we wanna sow. We really don't wanna sow past June because it's too darn hot and they just freak out. They need water every day basically. So we're still safe. Um, but I think what the point here is we're in collaboration with you guys. You guys have uh, your, your exhibit that you had on uh, circling around fire and social justice. So we wanted to help tie this in. So my goal is always long-term. My goal is not for today. My goal is long-term. I would love for you guys to get familiar with that plants, get your hands dirty, make these seed bombs, throw them out, germinate them. And some of them will grow, some of them will die. And knowing that November to about February is the best time and come revisit these videos um, I, I told Summer, let's do another class. November, December would be perfect time. We can give you guys more seed. But I think what we want to do is, is respect what you guys are doing at the foundation and then just get these seed out there, especially the milkweed. We want the milkweed out there right now. So ideally, the perfect time is November, December, January. But you guys should still have success as long as you follow our directions and then weed. That's the most important part. After you see them wake up, weed. Another question is, 
there are several variations of milkweed, correct? Um, when is the best time to grow milkweed, milkweed here in Southern California slash LA? Yeah, have you, can you still see my screen somewhere? Yeah. So look at this beautiful website. This is the Monarch and Milkweed Card. I mean, this is why we're have, having this conference is because we want people to have the information. Remember, we're gonna record all these talks, but we really want people to show up so they can ask these questions. So I will answer that question in short. So we are absolutely against planting non-native milkweed for a few reasons. Um, the biggest reason is that, it, that most of those tropical milkweeds, and they're gorgeous, they're beautiful red, like orange, yellow flowers. You can't deny that they're amazing. But what we find is that they're evergreen or they grow way too long here in California. And so they have food available all year for the monarchs. And what we're finding is two things. The monarchs are starting to not go to sleep because of this milkweed. But more importantly, there's pests, there's insects that this milkweed harbors. And because the leaves are there all year, when the monarchs go to feed, they're getting this pest and it's starting to kill a ton of monarchs. I'm not the expert on this. We have experts to give the talk. So Bob Allen, one of my friends, is gonna give this talk on what's so special about monarchs. He'll go into the disease that is hanging out on these tropical milkweeds and the monarchs are eating them and they're, they're dying. And nature kind of takes care of itself. The California milkweeds always go to sleep. They all, I can't keep them alive past November. They just go to sleep. The cold, the rain comes, they're, they're dead. They go to sleep, but the same plant wakes up in March. But what that does is it cleans the insect out, right? And so it's a beautiful relationship that they have. So the, what we're promoting is our three local milkweeds, Asclepius californica, which is narrow leaf milkweed, California milkweed, which is Asclepius californica, and Asclepius aerocarpa, which I forget the common name of. But if you guys want to know about that, you are in luck because at 1025 on June 5th, we have a hunt for three local species milkweed talk. And we'll even have a talk on how to make your own backyard nursery to grow milkweed. So I would encourage you guys to check that out. I'm super excited about that. But yes, we're trying to get tropical out and all the local stuff in. Antonio. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm on the board of the Caneo Valley Audubon Society, and one of our major projects every year is to encourage people to plant native gardens because the birds respond to native plants so much more than they do to other ones, especially the mother birds when they have insects to feed their babies. We give yeah. the scholarships every year, and um, if you're in this area, please look us up. Okay, I will. I, I will. I, that's perfect that you're here. I will actually connect with you guys and see if we can you guys can help us promote the uh, the uh, milkweed um, conference, but also if we can work together, we have a lot of great interns here and a lot of great staff who um, I think we could, yeah, we could definitely work together. That's great. Super, thank you. Thank you. What do you think, Summer? Are we ready for, for yeah. is the popcorn yeah. ready? So we can start watching these movies or what? We'll... Yeah. All right, so we're gonna go over three and we'll post these on YouTube. Summer has them so she can share them with you guys. We're gonna show you three ways of making seed bombs. The first one is probably the most sustainable and it's just newspaper um, and a little bit of water. You guys will see, we'll discuss the recipe afterwards. It's a short, I think a minute or two video. So here we go. All right, so today we're gonna to make newspaper seed bombs. Um, first, you'll need a blender and some seeds. Today we're gonna to be using milkweed seeds, a mixing bowl, two full sheets of newspaper, and water. And then you'll also need a rag. Uh, so the first step is to rip up the newspaper into really small pieces. The smaller you rip them up, uh, the easier it will be to blend. All right, now that your newspaper is all ripped up, you're ready to add water. Um, so for two full sheets of newspaper, we're going to add three cups of water. All right, so now you're ready to add the mixture to your blender. Um, you can start about, um, you can start blending with about half the mixture first. And be sure to add extra water if you need it. Uh, using too little water could damage your blender. And 
And as you go, feel free to use a chopstick or a spoon to mix it up and make sure all those pieces of paper get torn. Okay, once you reach this smoothie-like consistency, you'll, you're all set. So now you're gonna pour the blender mixture over the rag. Then you'll ball up the rag and then squeeze that excess water out of the newspaper pulp. All right, once, that you, you, once you've gotten most of the water out of there, you're ready to start rolling. So you're gonna take a piece of newspaper, um, about a ping pong ball size, add to your seeds, and then uh, roll it back up. And here we can see that the dark gray newspaper balls are the wet ones, and then once you let them dry out, they'll get this nice light gray color. Cool. So be happy to take any questions on that one. I wanna give you guys a few, um, just uh, reiterate what was said there. So two sheets of newspaper, two full sheets, cut down. And then the water, I don't like to give people random recipes, but on this one, it really is a little bit of feel. You wanna add a little bit of water. The good thing is if you add too much water, we just squeeze it out, right? The water, all the water is doing is, is wetting the, the newspaper down to make it easy to blend. Um, so add a little bit of water at a time until you find that smoothie consistency. This, in my opinion, is the best long-term seed bomb that we can make. So if you guys want to make seed bombs right now, do not soak them in the warm water like I just told you. <laughs> make sure they're dry. Make these, and these can stay like crackers for months. Because what what uh, newspaper is, or what newspaper does is it repels water. It wants to be dry. It's not like the clay or the compost that we're going to use in the other one which really is, wants to be moist, right? If, if it's around water. So these are excellent to make now. And if you guys do not feel like sewing them right now, that's fine, they'll, they'll dry and you guys can hold them for months and months. If you do want to plant them now, what I strongly recommend is that these are seed bombs that you should throw in your garden and step on or even slightly bury. And I know that sounds kind of counter, like why would we make a seed bomb? but the reason is that newspaper is so water repellent. Paper is just repellent. When it dries, it really pushes water away. And so this is best if you can get a little contact with the soil and force it onto the soil, if that makes sense. And that might sound like, okay, why are we doing seed bombs if you have to step on them? I've always thought of seed bombs as, as this. It's a way to get your hands dirty, to connect with your children, your neighbors, with volunteers, and whether it works or not 100% is really not the goal. The goal is not just the fun that you're having and the relationships you're building, but for us at the national parks, it's we're showing people about local seed. We're showing them how hard it is to collect local seed, why it's important to use seed from Southern California to Northern California. So it's actually just a gateway for us to have these conversations. So I wanna encourage you guys to, if you make these great, they can dry perfectly. Um, They'll be dry in a few days and then you guys can store them. Or if you want to plant them, I would either uh, lightly bury them or throw them and step on them, make sure that there's soil and seed contact. Summer, we have any uh, questions on this one? Well, we have some other questions, not on the on the process, but... Um... Okay, if they are like seed bomb related, we could probably hold off till we see all of them. But if maybe they're newspaper related, we could, um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you decide. There's one seed bomb related, just wondering, uh, someone's wondering if the seeds should be soaked before putting them in the seed bombs or if it's okay. Yes, so again, if you wanna save your seed, like, so on this guy specifically, this guy will dry really well because the, the newspaper will dry fast. And what that does is it doesn't keep your seed wet enough to germinate it. The next two videos have clay and compost involved and they will germinate your seed, whether you like it or not. And so if you want to sow them now, you should wet your seed. You don't have to, but like I said, it's like a rain. It's like your beans, right? You soak your seeds overnight, your beans overnight. They're so much easier to cook. So you don't need to, but it helps. If you guys are gonna store this and just wait till November or December to sow, then definitely do not water your seed because once you prime seed, you cannot go back. You Once you, if you pull out frijoles from your, your cabinet and you soak them overnight, you gotta cook them. They're, they're not going back dry. So. 
figure out what you're going to do. You want them now? Cool. Soak them overnight. Um, and if not, then, then do not soak them. But just to be clear, the seed bombs we're going to make right now, you guys can easily make without having soaked them. That's fine. Um, but I'm just saying going forward, we like to soak stuff. I've got a question. Hi. Sure. Uh, mine is about the soil, about the area where we're going to put these seeds. So I live in an apartment and there's a lot of feral cats around and they poop in the soil. So I want to know, is it okay to use soil that has had poop? Like, what if I remove that poop? Is like, yeah, so they, the, yeah, the easiest way to tell, I mean, the good news is you're probably not going to eat this stuff. So it's a little bit more of a concern if you were going to eat these plants, <laughs> uh, right? So um, the, the best way to tell, we always use this as an indicator is, are there other plants growing there? Is, is that soil so like putrid and so acid that nothing will grow there? Or are they just kind of burning a few areas and there's grass and weeds around? Okay, so there's weeds around. Okay, thank you. thank you. Yeah, because I mean, not to insult our plants, but our plants are basically weeds. So if a mustard plant will grow there, these plants will grow there. Right. So, yeah. All right, thanks. Thank you. Dan. Cool. So let's do the next one and be happy. I got till three o'clock, maybe till four. Um, so let's let's check out this next one. This is my favorite one. Hi everyone. Today we're gonna learn how to make seed bombs. We're gonna need a measuring cup, seeds. Here we're using milkweed, flour. water, and finally some compost. Here in a mixing bowl, we're going to add five parts of compost. You can use any unit of measurement you would like. Here I'm using half a cup for measuring. And then we're gonna use two parts of flour. And then we are gonna add some water, just enough to to have the mix clump together and we're gonna mix it really good, really well until it, the mixture starts to stick together and you can roll it up easily into a little ball. And the seed ball should be about the size of a ping pong ball, like as so. And then we want to add a pinch of seeds the top and then close it and then roll it back up and then we want to repeat this process with all the seed balls we made and this recipe should make about 20 to 25 seed balls and here's the final product thank you uh, summer i love working here our interns are so cool that's a that's a really cool video so um let's talk about this one this i like because getting kids involved is so cool with the flour because kids are like what what are you you're gonna make pancakes or tortillas for the for the bugs and um it's a really cool hold on a, a truck just pulled up let me see if i can get this guy out of here so we don't make too much noise what are y'all i'm on a class right here can you can you either unload it over there so we don't make too much noise? I'm on a Zoom. Okay, chill. Um, you can cut the engine, yeah? All right, sorry about that, guys. Um, and the llaves también. <laughs> um, all right, sorry. So, so yeah, so getting uh, kids involved just to understand that you could use the same thing you use to make pancakes and tortillas you can use to make a seed bomb, I think, is a really cool thing. Very easy to make, just to revisit re that recipe. It's two parts flour, five parts compost. What we use is the worm castings. And I know Summer had said earlier before we even started the class that she sifts her compost. So worm casting is basically just fine, fine compost. It's made when, when worms eat stuff and they the stuff that they poop out is this real fine, like dirt. So for compost, if you guys buy compost or make your own, then like Summer did, you can sift it through a sift or a screen to get out the bigger uh, stems or bigger leaves or whatever. Um, so once you have two parts flour, five parts compost, 
you add a little bit of water at a time, just like making tortillas or pancakes. You want to add a little bit at a time until it's moist enough. And it really is different because some compost is wet, some compost is dry. Same with, uh, with flour, won't be dry, won't be, won't be wet. But um, the moisture content can change on compost. So you just want to add a little bit at a time until you get that light, that, that correct, um, basically like a, a tortilla consistency. Um, and like she said, this, what she used was half a cup. So if you're using uh, one cup flour, two and a half cups compost, that'll make about 20 to 25 small seed bombs. And we're recommending you guys put three to four seed per seed bomb when you guys put that in. And if you saw her technique of rolling around, you wanna roll it around because you want some seed in the middle and you want some on the outside. You want it to be random. You don't want them ideally to all be up on top of each other. So do we have any questions on this one, Summer? No, uh, not on this one, we're good. Okay, do we have anything else that we could address right now or we wanna go on to this last one? Um, I think you've already covered this, but if you want to just reiterate, um, someone's wondering when the best time to plant milkweed and native flowers is. Uh, milkweed and what else? And other native native flowers, but. Yeah, so it, it depends on if we're doing seed or live plants from a nursery, right? So I can answer both. If we're doing seed in the ground, the best time for flowers, I'm going to say that's probably wildflowers, what they're asking about. November, December, January is probably the best time. Because like I said, it gives them time to grow roots. And then once the sun and the dry time comes, they just pop out and then you have March, April super blooms. Milkweed is a little bit different. Milkweed is best when it's warm. So March, April, May is the best time to start seed in the ground or in a pot. They like warmth. So that's seed. If you're talking about plants, it's always best to plant our native plants in the winter to early spring. So November to March is usually our time frame to plant milkweed. Anything else, Summer? That, oh. Um, somebody else says, I, Diana says, I have watched some seed bomb videos um, that use cat litter. What do you think about using cat litter to make seed bombs? Oh, that's, this is a gross question, but is it used cat litter? I'm just kidding. Um, that, I've never used that before. Um, that's clay. I mean, well, I'm assuming, I mean, cat litter is a bunch of different stuff, but it's probably the clay that they're using. And we're using clay today in this next video. So I'm assuming that it would be okay, but um, yeah, I, without, yeah, as long as it's clay, I think it would be fine. Yeah, I um, also wonder about the scents and things added to kitty litter. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is this will be the last video and then we can stay a little longer. I know it's like 30 minutes to three, but if we, Antonio and I and everyone, you can stay longer, we'll be here to keep making. All right, so here we go. This is the ingredients that you guys have today, and these are the sea bombs we'll be making. Today, we'll be making clay seed bombs. First, you'll need some compost, a measuring cup, uh, seeds of your choice. We'll be using milkweed because we love milkweed, uh, a mixing bowl, air dry clay, and some water. All right, let's get started. So you're going to start by measuring out a half cup of the air dry clay. Um, we'll be using a one to four ratio of air dry clay to the compost. So feel free to use a measuring device of your choice. As you can see, the clay is a little bit like sticky and hard to work with. Uh, so just be patient. Make sure you scrape out all that clay to get a accurate ratio. Next, you can start scooping up the compost. You're going to level at the top be adding four of these cups. Now I'm tearing up the clay to make sure um, our seed bombs will be well combined. We don't really want clay clumps in our mixture. Then you can start kneading the mixture together and if it feels a little dry, feel free to add a little bit of water. All right, so you're gonna keep kneading that until everything is well combined. So I rolled out some balls now, about the size of a ping pong ball. I'm gonna add some milkweed seeds in the center. 
and then close up the edges. As you can see, this uh, recipe is a, gets a little dirty, so be ready to get hands-on. Now we're just gonna repeat the process for all the seed balls. And in total, you'll have about 16 seed bombs. Here are some dried up ones. Right on. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be making uh, today. So you guys should all have your clay and your compost. Again, we're gonna use a half cup of clay to two cups of compost. So it's one parts, four parts. If you all don't feel like making that much, we could do a quarter cup uh, to one cup. So a quarter cup of clay to one cup of compost, or you guys can, can do the math uh, to switch it up. Um, but what do you think, Summer? Do we have any questions or should we go ahead and, and start? Um, just a quick question I'll answer. There's, um, so you should have about two, maybe two and a half cups of compost soil mixture in your kit. And then you have about two cups of powdered clay, um, which will work the same as the air dry clay. We just found that like giving, putting air dry clay in kits, it tends to get dried out and then it's too hard to use. But it's the same thing. So you just might have to add, I just have to play with the water measurements a little bit more. But yeah. And then seeds. And I don't know. Is there any other questions? Where did you? Um, do you have any recommendations of where to find compost soil, Antonio? I got this from um, LA Compost. They do like a, they have like a pilot program where they're uh, selling compost that they've created from like, um, from folks that drop off um, compostable items. I don't know where else to get them from. Probably yeah, I don't, uh, what we use is the worm castings um, because we used to fertilize a lot of our native plants in, our, in some of our gardens, our, our public gardens. Um, it is more expensive than compost, but we don't use that much. And we did the cost breakdown. We have one of our interns do cost breakdown. And this is pennies for, for a ball, right? And you guys inspired us somewhere. And we had a very good idea by one of our, our uh, volunteers to, during the rainy season, to have farmer's market stands here at the national parks and have families and people who are walking by make some seed bombs and as they're walking and they're hiking in the parks to throw these seed bombs of local seed that we've collected right and someone else brought up an idea of like a gumball machine I've seen these before of selling during the during the wet season right not we wouldn't really do it right now because but during the wet season making them and putting them in gumball machines and then having people take them and leave a donation if they like and as they're hiking it just is another way to interact right is another way to get the seed out there and then people understand, oh, well, this is this is local seed, it's pretty cool. So um, yeah, we, we're, we're excited about the seed coming up this winter, we're, we're stoked. Cool, so we are ready to get uh, dirty. I think you guys have Summer on video and then myself too. I've got uh, my friend and intern Leslie right here, she's holding the camera. And we're just gonna go over the basics. You guys, some of you look way too clean. Like that white shirt, Andrea, Andrea that white shirt is gonna get dirty. So it's, uh, be, be prepared to get dirty because this clay is sticky. So we're gonna do one part clay to four parts compost, add a little bit of water and we're gonna beat the heck out of it. And feel free to ask any questions as we're going along. Look at that. It's like, like masa, huh? One, two. Okay, I'm doing like a fourth cup three. clay, and then I'm going to do one cup of soil. So remember, if you guys are at all familiar with making tortillas, empanadas or whatever, knead this, beat it, and then add just a little bit of water at a time. The second you add too much water, it's really hard to get that water out. Hi, 
have a question. Mine is still a little bit crumbly. Does that mean I should add a little bit of water if it's if it's still crumbly? Oh, for sure, yes. Yeah, if it's too dry, it's just like like pancakes or tortillas, right? And it and the, probably the reason it is is because all the compost it's it's almost alive, and a lot of it is either wet or dry, so it's different. You know, the the compost actually changes. So just a little bit more water, and you should see it start to stick together. So the idea is that you're not going to see any big pieces of clay. They should all be mixed up. You should basically feel like you're four years old and you're just playing in the mud. You have to touch my glasses. Yes, it's okay. I feel like I'm making buñuelos. We just need 107.5 Caleb on the radio and you'll be like home. 107.5 Caleb. So I've got five little mini ping pong balls right here. You guys may or may not be past this phase, but once you got your mix, we just start rolling them up. I think I missed what was I like newspaper because I like to make a seed bomb that's sort of literary but was there a preference Antonio of the clay one was compost and then the newspaper is there a real preference or just what you like well it depends on what you're going to use them for the paper ones will probably not make it out in MTC lots without your help because the, the, once that newspaper dries, it really repels water. Um, so I don't like to use those in any place except a landscaped or like watered garden. And even then I would bury them. I would step on them or I would lightly bury them. Um, but they're really good vehicles for, you know, for having a set amount of seed in an area. So if you have an area that you want to plant, then you can make a bunch of those. But if you're going to throw them out um, whether it's in the hills or, or in your backyard just randomly and then water randomly, then the seat, the, uh, the clay, um, the clay compost or the flower uh, compost are, are the better, um, the better seed bombs. Because the clay wants to stay wet. It wants to, it'll receive the water really easily. And then maybe, yeah, maybe you missed the, the newspaper stuff. It dries up fast enough to where you could, um, you could set them for months. They'll hold their form and then you can bring them out in November or December again when you want to. The clay stuff, it's gonna be so wet, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna prime your seed. So you really have to sow it now.
a question. Um, how much is the clay that we got in the packet? Um, the, I mean the the powder, uh, the white powder. Is that the clay? Yeah, that's clay. There should be two cups in there, and then oh, okay. about two and a half cups of soil. I. Oh, okay, that's what's on the the little plant holder. Yes. So we mix that together. Um, you might not want to mix all of it just in case your ratios are a little funny, but yes, you just mix. Um, I did. I did about probably I'd say a half cup of the clay and then maybe a cup and then a, yeah about a cup of the soil is what I found worked for me because, oh, okay. because I added less clay at first but I still needed I added a little too much water to mine is what happened and so I needed a little bit more um, oh, okay. dry ingredient to make it not so wet and a little stickier oh okay so mix the soil and the clay together yeah, we mixed everything together. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I didn't get at first. So I used rubber glove. So it was a lot easier that way. And I've made two, four, six, nine, ten. I'm sorry I have to leave now. So thank you so much for all the information. And I'm going to plant the seeds. Okay, great. All right. Visit my van mode tip. We, re we accept $1,000 tips, $20,000 tips, and above. I'm going to ask another question. Yeah. The, um, I got these. Now, obviously, I'll only go to you. But I did visit the Theodore Payne Foundation to yeah. buy some uh, native seeds. Do you know if that five spot, the Nemophila maculata, is that a sun plant or partial shade? It's a good bet. Well, I, I know, but it, when we're talking about wildflowers, almost every wildflower is a full sun plant. Really? Most of, yeah, most of them don't hang out in summer sun, right? So they're moderate sun. So oh. that's why the July, August, September sun can be rough. Um, but I mean, there are there are wildflowers in the desert, um, so five spot definitely is uh, full sun. But you'll see that flower usually March, April, May, right? But with water, you can folks so that you can get it to to germinate and they'll be fine. I've been doing um, that. So you said most wildflowers are partial, but this five spot may be full sun. No, no, no. Most wildflowers are full sun. Got yeah, it. Yeah, most yeah most of flowers with sun. Um, you know, when you go to the shade, there's like if you, I don't know, you go to your nursery or like Home Depot, you go, hey, do you have any shade plants? And it's usually foliage, right? It's usually green. Okay. Not the showiest plants. But there is a difference between full sun, light shade, and then full shade. Full shade is ferns, you know, really, really wet. And light shade to full sun um, is a little bit closer. But if okay. you want, the rule of thumb is if you want flowers, you always want to put them in, in sun. Got it. All right, you guys keep busy. And then just to be clear, I don't know if you said you were going to us for seed, but we don't sell seed. Um, maybe you're talking about summer. Um, no, I just meant, you know, after finding you, I probably won't, won't be driving to Theodore Payne as much. That's all. You know, you can only give your, your growing time to certain places. Oh, yeah. I believe that Theodore Payne also gets their seeds from um, from the same place we got these from S and S Seed Supply, um, but they sell yeah. seed in bulk there. So, so like they sell it by the pound, and they have like like a hundred dollar something limit or um, minimum, I think. So it might be easier to get them from like Artemisia or um, or like Fig Earth Supply or something. There's a couple of nice local nurseries. Yeah, Artemisia Nursery is a great resource for, for uh, plants and for seed too. Um, 
Cool. So once we have the balls, you guys can start the process of basically like making a little oh yeah, a little bit, a little jar. We're gonna just poke our finger, make an indentation, and then that's where our seed's gonna go. And it's really easy if you've cleaned your hands up and but they're slightly wet to just pick up a few seeds. There's one right there. And there's two more. I'm gonna put three milkweed in here. And then I'm gonna wrap him up. And then I want the other one. to get and Antonio. Yes. Are we mixing the milkweed and the other seeds together or separately? It's it's your guys' choice. So here's the deal with the milkweed. The milkweed, um, they'll grow into the same conditions. Um but normally we wouldn't have milkweed in the same mix as the other ones because the other ones like to germinate in cold or warm and milkweed really likes warm when it germinates. So this time of year, they'll all germinate. You're gonna save them for winter, keep them separate because you might just waste your milkweed by leaving it out in the wet and cold. They usually don't germinate. They germinate after March and April, unless you have a greenhouse and you're heating them, et cetera, et cetera. So I've got probably about, let's see, about 20, 20 little seed bombs. Um, from here, that clay is gonna stay wet. And once you either throw them or place them out, you wanna irrigate. So you wanna either water by hand or you want to set on your irrigation sprinklers, drip system, unfortunately won't work unless you have spray, little spray mist uh, drip. And then it depends on how warm it is, but it's hard to go wrong with every two to three days water until you see germination. And unfortunately, you're probably gonna see weeds come up too. So it's a good idea to um, have a visual or sometimes you can mark um, with different like stakes, chopsticks, pin flags to mark where your milk, where your bombs landed and you will know exactly where you should see native seedlings because they can be hard to tell the difference between weeds and native seedlings and you might be irrigating the wrong things. But once you tell the difference, you guys wanna pull those weeds because they're sucking all that water, right? It's like my grandma's house. There's only one pot of beans and all the neighbor kids are coming to eat beans kick the neighbor kids out, get rid of the weeds and feed your cousin and yourself. It's a personal story. That was deep, huh? Mm -hmm. um, there's a question you guys have any questions? Yeah, there's a question from Diana wondering about um, local LA nurseries that have more native plants and also bulk seeds. Um, yeah, so I'm a huge fan. I saw her last night. She's a personal friend. Uh, that sounds bad. Huh? I saw her last night. We're in a band together. <laughs> we, she's, a, she's amazing. I know her husband. They're great people. She owns Artemisia Nursery. So Nicole and by, by Cal State LA in El Sereno. Um, that right now is my personal favorite. Theodore Payne is a really good resource too. They're out by, um, I used to work there. They're out by Burbank. Um, so those are two excellent um, local nurseries. If you want to go out to uh, uh, to Orange County, there's Tree of Life Nursery. Um, but right now, a lot of people are just doing stuff online. So uh, I, th I think Artemisia Nursery would be the best bet for plants and then some seed. And then Theodore Payne definitely has more, more seed. And if you have, I don't know who that, per or Diana asked, but um, the seed that you guys have, the wildflower mix, was bought by S and SC. So the letter S and S, so two S's, in Carpinteria. And they only sell to the trade. So you have to have a resale license. Um, but if you are really into it, like you're a school or a community garden, you have one of those resale licenses, it's best to go there. Because they have, they'll sell you a pound. They'll sell you millions of seed for, you know, 100 bucks. And all Theodore Payne does is they buy that and they break it up into little bags and make a ridiculous profit. I'm not here to trash the opinion. It's a very smart 
very smart business idea. All right. So I think let me share my screen. I think the yeah, still work on this thing, yeah. I think we're good. So I'm going to put up back my screen of classes because there is that milkweed class we have going up. But May 22nd, you guys might be interested in the native seed collecting, cleaning, and germinating class. Um, but I'll leave this up here if you guys want to uh, check this out. How's everyone's seed bombs going? You know, it must be hard. You can't like turn on your microphone or video because it's like it's really good. I may have missed it, but how many um, little balls are we supposed to be able to make from the mix? Um, hmm. Yeah, if you used our recommendation for half a cup of clay, two cups of compost, depends how big the, the balls are, but if they're about a little bit smaller than ping pong balls, you should get about 16 to like 22, somewhere in there. Um, another question, what if we used too much clay? I would have to get more compost, right? Yeah, you you would. I mean, it's going to be sticky, so you would you'd probably have to cut it with something. Um, and you don't want to use topsoil. You don't want to just go to your back backyard and dig it up unless it's clean, because there's a lot of weed seed out there, so it, it could contaminate your your seed bomb. So. So would it be okay to just get like, if I have some soil, just to like mix it in with. I've already made the balls, but I put too much clay. Um, so would it be okay just, I guess, to put it all, blend it all, put it all back together and then add some soil of my own that I may have? Uh, you're talking about like like soil in a bag or topsoil from your garden? So, soil from the bag. Oh yeah, like, yes, yeah, just, that's, yeah. Uh, we, yeah, you shouldn't really use soil, um, but you're talking about a small amount. So that's no problem to add yeah. it. You're just, yeah. you're just substituting. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Now it happens. It happens. Yeah, look at Akiko and Aiko, you guys are getting down over there, huh? What's up? Unmute yourself, por favor. How are you guys doing? Getting, getting into it over there. Hi. Hi. Abigail, making seed bombs. Right on. So make sure you guys. Um, Hola. Hola. He can't hear you. Hola. Hola. Buenas tardes. Abigail puede, puede hablar español, ¿sí? Oh, buenas tardes, Abigail, ¿cómo estás? Bien, bien. Tu vestido de princesa. Solamente un poquito de español. I'm putting, I'm putting an order in for, for lengua tacos and she's... 
What color um, so, is Spanish? Verde. Verde. <laughs> uh, so check this out, Abigail. You guys can make one of these at home by using a two liter, maybe soda bottle, or if you have one, you can cut holes in the two liter soda bottle on top for a watering can. But whatever you do, you're gonna have about 16 to 25 seed balls and you're gonna to wanna to water them every two or three days, all right? Okay. Make sure they stay watered. You should see the seeds wake up in about 10 to 14 days. They'll wake up really fast. Mm -hmm. so. What if we're a household that doesn't allow soda? Oh yeah, for sure. They, they, I'm just, just kidding. kidding. Oh, I, I've just seen uh, you can do milk, you can do milk or orange juice, anything. Those plastic recyclable bottles with the screw off top, you can just poke holes in them, right? And you can make your little watering can. We need a pokey hole. You know when you make hamburg, it's like this too. You have to like poke a hole. <laughs> oh, there's a worm inside. It's okay. Worms are good. Yeah. Like Jas Jasmine looks like she's into an intense phone chat conversation right there. That is <laughs> it's all good. It's Zoom. Actually, I'm texting my friend who's also doing the workshop. I'm nah. telling her I messed up. <laughs> no, no. With the, the clay, whole... yes, really. I put, I put too much clay. Ellie, are, do you live in uh, Dallas, Ellie, or is that is that your last name, Dallas? That's a cool last name. That's cool. So yeah, you can shape the real easy ones to to shape and to hold. I mean, they're all easy to shape, but um, a lot of people with the paper ones, they make they have forms, right? So you can make hearts. I've seen people make like um, you can use the like a cookie cutter to make, you know, different, different forms if you want. Um, but Ellie says she's going to use them for Mother's Day presents. I think that's pretty cool. Thanks for coming, Ellie. Um, so I will say it is three o'clock. Um, if anyone has to go, they can, but we'd love to get like a photo. I can do a quick screenshot if people want to you know, pose with their seed bombs for us. That would be amazing. I, <laughs> I need both hands to take screenshots. So I'll oh yeah, look at those. Smiling, but... <coughs> I know they're so wet. Here is going to be so dirty after that. Okay, one, two, three. Let's do another one for good luck. Oh, there's Ellie. Yay. Okay, one, two, three. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. How many did everyone make? How many did everyone get to make? Jasmine says hers are ugly. Mine don't look great either. There's like lots of sticks sticking out, but I'm sure once they'll dry and they'll they'll work. So that'll be good. 15. I think I got about 22. 19. Wow. Now we bury these, correct? These do not have to be buried. Um, the, the paper ones should be buried because they're so water repellent. The other stuff doesn't have to be buried. When you throw them, depending on how wet you made them, they're probably going to break apart. Um, so what I like to do there is you can step on them, right? This doesn't apply in the in native nature, right? In, in abandoned lots. But if you can step off them, what that does is it, it ensures that there's contact with the seed and the soil. And then from there, water every two to three. You should water today if you use them today and then water every two to three days and um, just look for germination and, and have fun. Thank you. Fantastic. I, I, one of my volunteers bought me this. I promise I'm not drinking beer. I'm not drinking this. I want you guys to know that I'm not drinking beer. Thank you. Um, was there any last questions or anything else? Yeah, comments? I think there was one question about where do I get more amazing classes like this? And the answer is two, Eventbrite Summer Fund for our classes and check back with Melinda and Summer. 
because hopefully we'll be back to do, we do native food classes, Melinda and Summer. So what we're doing right here is we're reaching people who maybe before would not do native plants. I do a cooking class, right? I do mesquite tortillas, I do a sage pesto, we fry hummingbird leaves. It's a lot easier in person than online, but anything that we can do to connect people to native plants, because it's not just landscaping, right? It, that's a very limited group. Everybody eats, <laughs> uh, everybody knows a kid, right? So making seed bombs is one thing, eating is another thing. So however we can make it to connect with your people, like we would love to participate. Um, so we should go ahead and just book it for another seed bomb, like November, Done. December, right? Done. Done, Which booked, means, and I need a food class too. So two classes. Yeah, we love Ellie's, that. Ellie's idea of like the Mother's Day thing, because they would make really good Christmas presents, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to completely forget about Ellie's name and go, this is my idea. I made them last year for Mother's Day and just like tell a whole story and, and no one has to know. It's all good. Yeah, it was great, Antonio. Thank you so much. Amazing. Yeah, and I, I do have that native food class. Uh, it's June. On the Samo fun, um, so we're gonna start recording some videos for that. But it's a, it's a fun class. If I can share my screen one more time, just so you guys can see uh, the website that you would find that on, it's right here. You just Google Samo fun Eventbrite. June twenty sixth is our native food class, and all of it's online right now. But you know, once COVID clears up, hopefully we'll be back in person making mesquite tortillas, mesquite cookies. Come in with page, uh, clear up, et cetera. And yeah, I will make sure to um, share the PowerPoint and all the classes with everyone in a follow-up email. Um, awesome. And this is recorded, so we might be able to put it on YouTube. Um, yeah, cool. <laughs> all right, Just thank great. you everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much, Antonio. Um, of course. You, Antonio. See you soon. Thank you guys for inviting me. Look yeah. forward to to working with you guys again. You guys have a great Thank you, experience. Antonio. You guys are welcome. Absolutely. Thank you so much. What an honor for us. You guys take care Thank of yourself. You, Get those hands dirty. Thank you, Summer. Yay, Summer. See you guys.